Today I'm going to do a video on how to choose your bug out backpack. There's so many different choices to make uh, when selecting a backpack. I really like uh, an article by REI, I'll put a link in the description box below, where they give expert advice on what to look for for their backpacking, hiking backpacks. But with your bug out backpack, it's going to be a little bit different. So since everyone has their uh, own uh, personal preferences regarding backpacks, I'm just going to list the stuff that I like looking for when selecting a bug out backpack. Let's get started. One of the first things that you're going to have to decide upon is whether you want to go with a tactical style backpack or more of a civilian style backpack. The backpack that you see right now is the Kelty Red Wing 50, which is currently the one I'm planning on using for my Urban Bug Out Bag version 3.0. And the main reason that I want to use it, uh, one, it's a it's a great backpack. It's a has it's great reviews, and the, but the main reason is that so many people have it. I wanted to really go with the Gray Man concept uh, for this version of the Bug Out Bag. Uh, I, the last time uh, I made a Bug Out Bag, I was using. Uh, the 511 Tactical Rush 72, which is an awesome backpack as well. Uh, the only problem that I had with it is that people kind of associated it with a tactical backpack. Even my mother-in-law, she uh, was <laughs> talking about, she would call it my tactical backpack. So I really wanted to not have that happen with the updated version. So this one, uh, it's uh, probably not built as strong as those 511 ones are, but it's a, a little bit more lightweight. It's, it's much more affordable. And by shedding a couple pounds, I'm able to include an, a, additional kind of pounds of uh, items that I wasn't able to include before. So that's one thing that you're going to have to decide upon when selecting your bug out backpack. Whatever backpack you decide to get, I would make sure that you choose a brand that's well regarded, gets great reviews, and is built to last. Uh, the Kelty Red Wing, uh, for example, is just one that's been around for a long time. Everyone loves it, uh, and for good reason. It's just built well. I, I wouldn't recommend going with like a no-name uh, brand that you've never really tried before or heard before. Uh, you don't really want to have that fail with, on you uh, during an emergency situation. Uh, so you might have a whole bunch of nice stuff in your backpack, uh, but if your backpack actually fails or rips or whatever because it's a lower quality one, uh, that's not going to be a good thing. So uh, whether you're going the tactical or practical approach uh, to your backpack selection, I would make sure that it's an established brand and uh, don't go too cheap on it. Although uh, the, so the more the civilian range backpacks are going to be more inexpensive than some of the, the deluxe uh, tactical style backpacks. We're, we're talking uh, 511 Tactical, Maxpedition, VanQuest. Those ones are going to be uh, a little bit more money or a lot more money than the ones that you might be able to get at REI or Cabela's. One of the next major things to decide upon is the size of the backpack that you want. Do you want to go with an ultralight kind of bug out approach? Uh, maybe you're a single person and you're just kind of looking out for yourself. Or if you're a family man like me, you might want to have a little bit more uh, gear in there to help uh, supplement things that your family might need. So for me personally, for if I'm bugging out with multiple people, if you're with a wife and kids, for example, I like having a, at least 50 liters in, the, in a bug out bag. Uh, that might be too heavy for some people that are going for the more of an ultralight or a quick approach, but with a, uh, you know, with small children and a wife that's not really accustomed to this kind of thing uh, I'm not anticipating moving as fast as others that are uh, more of like the, the lone wolf type mentality so uh, with the backpack choices you also know with me that I like having a module so uh, the backpack that I choose has to be you know module friendly so being able to store uh, multiple small modules in there uh, for quick grab and go access so if it doesn't facilitate itself well for storing these kind of things uh, that's not really what I like having in my uh, bug out backpacks uh, but the, the Red Wing 50, for example, has a lot of uh, different uh, storage selection or storage uh, capabilities on where I could put uh, these smaller modules that are for some of the other areas of the bug out backpack. As you probably noticed by now through my channel, I like choosing black backpacks uh, just because I think they blend in well. Again, it goes back to the gray man concept, especially in an urban environment. I mean, you see black backpacks all the time. This might not be as well a good, a good of a color choice if, say, if you live in a snowy area, maybe you want to have a white backpack. If you live in a wooded area in the rural, uh, you might want to go with more of a military style or a, a camouflage or a tan or something like that. So just make sure whatever backpack you choose that the color blends in with your environment. For me, since it's an urban environment, I feel that black Black is probably the best color choice for me. With your backpack selection, I recommend going with one that has either an internal or external frame. Something that's going to give you a little extra support. Uh, one problem I had with the Rush 72 is that it didn't really have any kind of frame in it other than more of a thicker uh, back padding area. I really wanted to have something a lot more solid. I think it really helps with the extended carrying of your uh, the supplies that you have in your backpack, especially like during a uh, bob walk. Uh, I, I started feeling it a lot worse with the Rush 72 than I did with the Kelty Red Wing 50. So again, make sure you get either an external or internal frame. I think internal is a lot more common, uh, but uh, you could also get external. I would not recommend going with one that does, ha does not have a frame. 
make sure that the backpack fits your torso well. You don't want a backpack that's hanging too loose or riding too high on you. You want it to be just the right fit. If you go to a store like REI or something, they're going to help you get all situated in there. But you want it to fit your, your torso uh, just perfectly. That's going to help have a more balanced load, even load to it. Uh, over greater distances, it's going to be uncomfortable if your backpack's riding a little too low or anything like that. So again, torso fit. I also recommend that the bug out backpack that you select has some kind of airflow uh, on the back portion of the backpack. Something so air is uh, getting through there and it's not just sitting flush up against your back. Uh, that's another uh, really nice design uh, perk uh, for this particular model because it has a uh, kind of this uh, frame over here that allows air to get into the back here and you also have it here more towards the waist end. It's not fun to be carrying something for uh, you know many miles and just having your back just build up with sweat. So I'll try to find something that has some kind of airflow. This one's kind of a no-brainer, but you want to make sure that you include it. Make sure that your backpack has some kind of a water reservoir uh, area for including a water bladder. That's, I think that's the easiest way of carrying uh, large quantities of water. Um, just having a bladder in there and having uh, you know, multiple holes in the top so you could actually uh, wind it around to your uh, shoulder strap. So quick access to water. You want to make sure that your backpack has nice, thick shoulder straps to it, and I prefer having a chest strap as well. I really think that helps balance the load, especially when you're walking for great distances. I don't really care if it's an elastic uh, style chest strap, but at least it has to be there. Uh, sometimes you even have options for having something like a, a whistle on there. Uh, but the shoulder straps I feel are, are most important out of all the, the front straps on your backpack. So just a nice padding on there. Uh, additional attachment points is also a nice thing, although it's not as required for me. Also make sure that your backpack has a waist strap to it. You want to carry the majority of your load on your, or your hips and not really on your shoulders, especially when you're going greater distances. So I don't really require a lot of padding here in the front part of the waist strap, but I do want it on these side areas where it's actually touching my hips because I want to have the, the majority of the percentage of the weight riding on this. And so the shoulder straps really aren't carrying as much. So it allows me to go for greater distances because it's much easier to carry weight on your hips than it is on your back and shoulders. So again, if it has attachment points that's nice although for me it's not uh, required so but you want to have a nice waist strap though I also want to have side pocket areas uh, for storing water bottles so it could either be external with kind of the mesh uh, material or it could just be a, a dedicated side pocket where you could fit uh, a liter water bottle so on both sides is what I would prefer uh, I think with your bug out bag that you want to have some water in there right away you don't want to have to start looking for water immediately in an emergency situation so either having a pocket area on the side here or uh, a pocket a zipper pocket that's a more internal to the backpack for having water ready to go you're going to want to make sure that the bottom of the backpack has that PALS webbing uh, option over there so you could attach a tent, uh, a sleeping bag, a sleeping pad, anything like that. Uh, just anything external to the backpack. A lot of the times you'll see a real nice backpacks that don't have uh, this kind of PALS webbing on there. So make sure whatever backpack you choose does include that. And if it doesn't, you might have to add it on with an alterations place at a later time. Another thing to consider is to see if your backpack has some kind of rain cover. I think that's going to be real beneficial in an emergency situation when you're dealing with rain. Yeah, of course you could use uh, something like a garbage bag, a contractor bag in a pinch, but having a dedicated rain cover uh, designed specifically for your backpack will help keep all the contents that you have in there uh, dry during, if it's a rainy. It might not help it if you're going to fall into a lake or anything like that, but if you're going through heavy rain, you don't have to worry about your electronics getting as water damaged. That's going to do it for this video featuring how to choose your bug out backpack. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Please leave your comments below in the comment section regarding what you look for when selecting a bug out backpack. It'd be interesting to get a dialogue going. So again, I'm going to be using the Kelty Red Wing 50 for uh, my Urban Bug Out Bag version 3.0, unless things change, but most likely it's going to stick with this backpack because it hits all the, the points that I really like looking for in a, a bug out style backpack. So leave your comments below in the comment section and see you guys next time. See ya.